open the image called balance tooth, and for some reason, there's one tooth that's slightly darker than the others. So we're going to lighten that up. It doesn't need to be lightened much. How could we lighten this in a very even sort of way across the entire tooth, keep it non-destructive and editable? We could use an edge ust mint. We could use an adjustment layer. Let's give that a try. I, I'm just going to use levels because it's nice and simple. So I'll throw on levels, grab that middle slider, crank it to the, oh, it's affecting everything. What do I do about that? Layer. The layer mask. What do I do about the layer mask? Command I. We, in, we just need to fill it with black. I mean, I could obviously just start painting black everywhere except that tooth, but probably easier to fill the whole thing with black. Grab some white paint, bring that opacity up, hit zero on the keyboard to get that 100% opacity, and we can just start revealing that lightning effect. And the nice thing about using that adjustment layer, if we double click on that icon there, look at that, we can lighten or darken as we need. We could give her the redneck look. We could make it too bright. When clients tell you to whiten up the teeth, should you actually make them white? What color are teeth really? Yellowish. Yeah, kind of like an ivory, maybe a bone sort of color. They're not white, they're not gray. Uh, they do have a bit of yellowness in there. Now that being said, the rest of the teeth in here are maybe a little bit too yellowish. So let's take a look at fighting some of that yellow cast in the teeth, some of that dinginess, and also lightening them up a little bit. What can we use to take some of that yellow out of the teeth? Hue saturation. Hue saturation. You know, that's actually what I would use. Uh, oftentimes people say, well, you could you make a levels, and then you could subtract some of the yellow by adding blue. And you could. The problem with trying to do levels for something like this, we have a very specific direction that we want to take these, which is closer to gray. If we were into the blue channel and started adding blue, which would subtract some of the yellow, there's different shades of yellow in there. Just like in skin, there's different colors of skin. Like the skin up here is a different color, not just a different brightness, but a different color. You can't do a painting of somebody with just one color of skin. There's like all kinds of different colors that go into different areas. And there could be the same sort of thing. Maybe it's a slightly yellower yellow down here, maybe a bit of a more orangey yellow up here. So if we use levels to try to pull some yellow out by adding blue, we could get slightly different hues in different areas. But a hue and saturation will let us pull everything one direction, which is close closer to no saturation. Now, like I said, teeth aren't actually gray, so you don't want to take all the saturation out. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to throw on a hue and saturation layer, and we're going to pull all the saturation all the way out. I know, I know, I just said it didn't look good when you do that, but it will make it very easy to see where you're doing the masking. So now I'm going to do basically the same sort of thing. On this layer mask, I'm going to paint with white to reveal that desaturating effect. And as we discovered, that pure gray is going to look pretty nasty. And depending on the area that you're doing, like right now, these teeth are fairly small. We could probably fill the whole thing in like this and then just option click on the layer mask and fill in any little bits that we missed. But if this was a larger area, there's a technique we could use to fill in a really large area really fast. You guys remember in first semester, there was that girl with the red flower around her neck and we turned it blue? Yeah. Shift clicking around. Um, so let's say I, you know, rather than trying to fill in everything around here, if I just kind of go around the outside, and this will, you'll remember this once you see it. I'm just going to go around the outside and make sure you don't go over the gums or the lips, just the teeth there. So having gone around the outside, if I option click on the layer mask, we've got this open area in here. And like I said, like this, it would probably be faster just to fill it in the usual way. But let's say this is a great big, you know, I don't know, a flower around her neck that we need to change the color of. What could I do to very quickly select this area and fill this all with white? Select. Using what would be a good way to select it? Magic. The magic wand. Yeah, normally I don't recommend the magic wand for making selections, but in this case, it actually works pretty good because it's just a very large area of one color we need to select. So I select the black. And do I then fill it with white? Oh, otherwise I get this fringe. OK, uh, how do I expand it? Select, modify, expand, and I'm going to guess at five pixels. Oop, that was a pretty good guess. You notice that that selection jumped out past that fringe? Now we can choose edit, fill, and for contents use white. So there they are. The teeth are looking gray and gross. Again, the nice thing about using the adjustment layer is we can ease that saturation back in. So as they started out, they were a little bit too yellowish. 
we can just ease some of that saturation out. I find usually like, you know, minus 30, minus 40% looks pretty good. There's still some of that yellow, that ivory color remaining. Now, here's something. If we wanted to make those teeth a little bit lighter, have we talked about the lightness slider? It's like putting a white layer over top at a low opacity. If you darken, it's like putting a black layer. If I made a, a new uh, hue and saturation, I said, I want to lighten this image. I'll just use the light. Oh, it kind of looks like fog. Notice how the blacks get washed out and gray looking. And if you try to darken, it just puts a, a gray cast over top. The whites become gray. So the lightness, it's called hue and saturation for a reason, not hue, saturation, and lightness. <sighs> that being said, if it's just a tiny little bit, you probably could nudge it up a few little notches. But we want to do this in the most professional way possible. So we're going to use levels. So I'm going to make another levels adjustment layer. The first one only affected the one tooth. This one is going to affect all of the teeth. And you can see it's light, oh, it's lightening everything. Huh. Do I invert the layer mask and then paint over the teeth again? I mean, I went to all that effort to make this layer mask here. Can I reuse or recycle that layer mask? Anybody know how? Option, command, and drag. How did you guys know that? Well, I'm gratified to see you were listening. So we can use this now to lighten the teeth even further. If you took it too far, you can ease it off a little bit. So play around until they look the way you want them to. Now, one of the things I find, guys, about lightening teeth like this, OK, hang on a sec. Let me undo what I've done here. Oftentimes, it looks a little bit overdone towards the back teeth. Even when the front teeth look fine, sometimes the back teeth look a little bit too bright. So here's what we can do to kind of avoid that. Um, these two, like look at that. If I zoom in a bit and I do a before and after, the front teeth look pretty good. You know, they're nicely balanced out now. Uh, they're desaturated, they're brighter. But this tooth here, it's back in the shadows. It feels like it's gotten a little bit too bright. What can I do about that? Look at that, it's totally revealing the effect back here. What if I took a paintbrush with a BHSB, big honking soft brush, maybe like 50% of passing, went bump. Take a look at what would happen. I can remove the lightening and the desaturating effect from those back teeth. And maybe on this one over here as well, just kind of remove that a little bit. 